Beyond IRCAD. Surgical Journey. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. We are recording from the IRCAD studio in Strasbourg, France. This is the IRCAD podcast, and we're about to take you on a journey to discover the life and career of a successful surgeon. I'm very excited to be hosting this show. My name is Chris. Today, we have a remarkable guest joining us. He's a highly respected figure in the field of surgery uh, with decades of experience and many achievements. And he's also paved the way for aspiring surgeons from all around the world. It's a great honor. Professor Sarah Arasil, welcome. Bienvenido. Thank you. Thank you uh, for being here. It's a pleasure to, uh, to stay here with you and uh, trying to, to give my experience of, of my profession like a surgeon. Thank you so much. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about you. Uh, we're going to be talking about your life as a surgeon. Um, about your career and the idea is to share uh, your insights and your wisdom with our young listeners worldwide. Uh, so of course to begin this podcast I'd like to talk a bit about your personal background. Uh, could you tell us a bit about where you're from and how it all began for you? Uh, yes, uh, well I'm, I'm a Spanish. Uh, I was born in a little town in uh, very near Alicante, that is in the southeast of Spain. Uh, I have to say that my family, there is no uh, surgeon, no doctors. So uh, the only thing uh, that I I realized once is that I would like to be a surgeon. So uh, when I was uh, probably uh, for 12, 13, 40, 40 years old, I, I, I said that, that to become a surgeon should be nice. And why should be nice? Because uh, probably doing things I can cure people. So what means doing things that mean operating things? So uh, that, that's the way how from, from there I, I went to study uh, uh, to the medical school in Valencia. And, uh, and then I had the opportunity to be involved in one of the, the surgical teams from uh, one person that is uh, called uh, uh, Professor Garcia Granedo, who showed me when he was 30, years old and I was just 20, uh, the idea of what means surgeons and surgeon means not only operate and do operations, means uh, making questions about what you do in the way that you do and if you can improve what you are doing. And in that sense, uh, I think is where uh, I started to become a little bit more different from the point of view of, uh, of, of, of to be surgeons doing things. Mm -hmm. And then I choose Barcelona to, uh, to do my residency and in the hospital of Santa Cruz San Pau. And there I realized that really the, uh, the, uh, the surgery was my, my dream and uh, also the colorectal surgery. Okay. Um, not only that, but I was uh, always interested in why the things, and that is why during the residency I perform the PhD program. So I finished, I finished the residency doing uh, becoming doctor. That is how uh, when you uh, you uh, you perform the PhD program, and thanks to that, I I went to uh, to Paris during two years doing uh, colorectal surgery, and there again in an university uh, hospital. Uh, I met uh, several uh, professors where always they say the same thing. Why are you doing so? And uh, don't forget that if you have questions, if though those things that you are doing are in right position, just make questions if you can make it different. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, uh, well, I have developing uh, many uh, kinds of procedures, but always in two ways. One, if that way is the best, 
and in other uh, trying to do the minimal invasive surgery that you can. And that is the way how I came here to the haircut because yes. this is the cathedral <laughs> of the of the minimal invasive surgery. So uh, uh, nearly 20 years ago, um, uh, I just started with the transanal procedures were in Spain. Uh, yes, it's true that I am one of the pioneers in, in transanal uh, procedures. And um, I was de developing many studies um, the how the, the transnational procedures could be performed as a minimal invasive surgery. And uh, I remember that once in, in Porto, in Portugal, I met uh, Dr. Armando Melani. Uh, he invited me uh, to go uh, to Barretos and there I met uh, Professor Maresco. That is eight, nine years ago. So uh, that is how uh, I belong to this big family and I am very proud to belong to this IRCAD uh, Institute. Well, we're very proud to have you here. And so this is quite amazing, actually. You were saying that even at four or five years old, you already knew that you wanted to be a surgeon. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, well, did something well, trigger yes. that? No, I don't think so, because uh, by that time, uh, we saw uh, many, uh, many films about surgeons and big surgeons. Uh, and uh, I don't know others, but for me, uh, this kind of, of people, uh, you know, I suggest me that yeah. I, I, could, I, I, could, I could be a, or I could become a person like that. But another thing that that I have to say that all of these things must be done with a lot of work. But this work, if you like it, is not really work. One of the things that I I I, I have to say uh, when I am at home is that uh, my family says don't work at every time, and for me it's not work. It's a passion. It's passion. It's passion that means that, you know, when you uh, really uh, um, enjoy what you are doing, uh, it's like a hobby. That is true that you, you need to have other hobbies. It's very important. Um, I remember that uh, I am a tennis player. I like a lot to play tennis. Okay. I play tennis uh, since I am 10 years old, so uh, that's a wow. quite long time. <laughs> and I remember that my trainer says... Look, sometimes to improve, you have to, to do a step backwards to give you impulse and to have a better uh, impulse yes. and to progress better. Mm -hmm. So that means that sometimes you have to think in other things and enjoy in other things um, to do better your job. And when you come back, enjoy more and uh, progress in what you are doing. So even though this is your passion, are there moments where you manage to completely switch off from surgery? Absolutely. Or it, yes. Yes, I yes. think it's necessary. It's, it's I important. I think it's important, yeah. yeah. And also is what my wife says to me, that I have to disconnect. <laughs> okay, well, that makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. So tennis then, you uh, are you competitive or? Mm, I was. Yeah? Not now. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the sport is very good, you know, to realize like... Uh, physic, like uh, mental, uh, the tennis, like other sport, when you are doing so, uh, you are not thinking in other things. So um, you just are trying to do your best playing tennis. Yes, of course. Because, because it's very technical. Of course. Also. So uh, you have to think, uh, well, uh, in the ball, how to hit it, to move. And then, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not thinking how to improve this procedure or this technique. So, uh, and I think that's very, very important to, um, you know, to have things besides yeah. uh, because in that way when you come back you 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 come stronger you have balance absolutely yes, yes. and also uh, what is also important is your family i mean someone that when you close open your door at home there is someone there and someone that that really uh, well loves you I completely and, agree. and that is give you uh, all the energy you know, uh, to keep going in your career. That's really, really important. It's the best fuel. 
isn't it? The the love that you can get from uh, from your family and relatives. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So uh, um, that is why uh, um, I don't know if it is in the line, but but what it's it's important is is that uh, to become to become a good surgeon, you must have a complete life, and your complete life is that to uh, uh, you know uh, now. Uh, as, as we said before, I am professor, university, and things like that. But all those things are not important, and I couldn't um, um, reach to these things if your family, other hobbies, you have uh, another life that gives you the energy that when you come back, you go with this passion that was the one that you 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 commented before. You know, it's uh, I'm actually quite impressed because you are a professor and you yeah. are very respected in the world of surgery, but you also seem to be very down to earth. It's absolutely necessary. Yeah. Absolutely necessary. Because you have just to wait. If you think that you are the best, you just have to wait, operate patient, persons, and you will see that you have uh, all, not all the patients goes in the right way. Yes. So you have to be uh, very critical uh, with yourself and uh, try to know that always when you are doing the things you can improve them so uh, uh, from my point of view um, you're wrong if you think you are the best or you are not one of the best do Never. You think, do you think ego is sometimes a problem in the world of surgery um, I think it was I don't think the new generations thinks the same thing mm-hmm. um, I would say uh, that the new generations uh, are coming, um, and I, I, I'm really uh, I'm sure about what I'm going to tell you, is that uh, what is more important is the team. What is more important is that you can't do anything if you don't have a good team. That also you need other, other professionals to improve what you are doing. And when you are, I'm doing that, I'm saying that is because you need not only a team of surgeons, a multidisciplinary team. And uh, and also, if you have improved more than that, uh, outside of the medical area. Yes. I mean, uh, if we, um, as, as we said before, it's very important in the uh, the clinical research. But when you are developing your career and, and then you are growing and growing, you realize that uh, uh, nowadays you need more than that. And, you, and to improve like robotics or other, other device, you need engineering, you, you need biologists, you need other people. Of course. Of course. So uh, in that way is the way how we real progress. Yes. So uh, I have to say, uh, oh, I would like to, to give the message that if a young surgeon uh, want to start, don't start, you know, uh, Xavier Serra says that we have to know engineers, biologists. No, start belonging in a good team with a good uh, chief or a good, you know, uh, leadership. Yes. And then follow him. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, uh, you have to grow up in your sense, in your ideas, but with without a big ego, without uh, not the comments that I am the best, and always knowing that you need other people to grow and uh, make a good team. So stay humble and, you know, it's teamwork. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to go back to your childhood for a minute because you said you're from a rural area uh, near Alicante. Well, it, it was not rural. It was no? industry, but... Okay. Uh, yeah, it was right. industry, but, you know, outside of the... Uh, of the was was a small town. Mm-hmm. Uh, outside of Alicante in the south of Spain? In the southeast of Spain, yeah. yes. And your your family wasn't involved no. in any medical professions? No. So how no. did it? How did you find the, the motivation and confidence? Were, were they supportive of, of, your, of your projects? Um, yes, as, as I said, uh, always your family or your environment. I, I, I don't know if, if, if to say uh, 
the family. I think the family because it's more in the in normal way. Yes. But you know, uh, to be well established from the point of view of of emotional, I think is really really very very important. Um, I had I had well the uh, the incidents of my my father died when I was eleven years old. So uh, I had. To, a big problem from that point of view, but you know, uh, with four, uh, um, two um, brothers and and two sisters and my mother, and a big family, uh, they helped me to give me uh, all the opportunities that I could. So uh, uh, I, I took the opportunities. Uh, they always support me because uh, as I, I, I lived in, 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 in Alicante, I went to Valencia and then I, I traveled to Barcelona and then I traveled to some, somewhere else around the world. They were always there. They were always there. And when uh, I met my, my wife, that was during the residency. So uh, uh, when, when I studied during the residency in, in Barcelona, I met my, my wife. I didn't want to, to meet her because I want always just be focused in studying. But you know, your life is like that. You can't predict it. You can't, never. So I think it was uh, the best thing that happened in my life. So, uh, because with my wife, uh, she's she's nurse, so surgical nurse. Okay. So um, I think the typical the typical surgeon and surgical nurse, but it has been always a real help in my life. And do you think she also maybe understands you even better because she's involved yeah. in the medical field? Yes, absolutely. A lot of pressure. Absolutely, uh, and for me, it has been a real, real. Uh, um, maximum support in my life. Yeah. But imagine one thing. My passion has been developed until I have two sons. None of them are surgeons because they are both engineering. Mm -hmm. So I probably because they have seen, you know, one of the centers of my, of my son, they say, my father is very passionate. But um, he uh, studied too much. He uh, doesn't stop to work. And I don't know if I like that. Well, he's mechanical and electronic engineer. And what I have to tell you is that we have uh, a new uh, device uh, of uh, software program uh, for ICG that is called SerGreen. And is he who have developed it. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, wow. and uh, probably you can you can see that there are already uh, two papers that are published in the very good uh, journals, in what is called Quartile One. That is very good uh, journals, and it's called Sir Green, and that's the program that quantifies the ICG. Oh, you must be proud of them then. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And you know why it's called Sir Green? Because Sir is the Sarah, and Green is the I see. All oh, right, Sir, see, Sir yes. Green. Sir it's Green. Sarah, your Sarah, your my name. Okay. Yes, my as him. So uh, was he? He he developed the program, and uh, and all my team has developed all the procedures and uh, clinical trials to uh, to know if this program works or doesn't work, and uh, and by the moment it works. So uh, you know. All the things that you you say, well, uh, you know, uh, I I don't know if 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 me like father, I have uh, uh, sent the message to uh, my sons because no none of them want to become surgeons. But afterwards, it has been better. Yeah. Because one of those have developed this program that uh, we have achieved two PhD programs with this program, and the other one is also engineering also, and has developed, developed all the um, studies of the variables to know the exactly uh, uh, meaning of these programs and the sense of, of the program to give the idea of, of knowledge. Okay. So, uh, so in the end, you kind of merged your activities. That's right, yeah. yes. No, that's yes. amazing. So that means that, you know, when you have a nice family in that way, uh, all the people is working. Yeah, of course. In the same way. And that is why I, I told you that uh, sometimes uh, 
it's much better to have people outside your area because uh, you are learning more mm -hmm. about other fields that are not your field. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that the fact that you lost your father at a young age um, uh, was a problem for you on a personal level, maybe for a quest of identity and your your profession has helped you to gain that confidence uh, you know as a leader uh, that you might have been searching for before uh, that's a good question uh, what I remember is that for me um, that could uh, that was a motivation I appreciate a lot that my family gives me the opportunity but I knew that my family gives me the opportunity but I don't have a father behind me to save me. Yes. So I said, Xavier, that's my name. <laughs> you have to, de to develop yourself and go ahead. Yes. So uh, instead of saying, oh, I don't have my father, things like that, uh, my point of view was you have to carry it. Yeah, I think in the end it's probably made you stronger. So, yeah, I think for me it was a motivation. Yeah. Motivation. Because I, I knew that my father, my father was, uh, uh, well, I was 11 years old when, 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 when he died, but I knew that my father was uh, uh, very clever, intellectual. Um, so all those things, um, very hard worker. So all those things uh, were things that were inside me. Great values. Yes, great values. And also, I, I remember that he said, uh, "Don't, don't, don't be, don't be uh, just uh, normal from the point of view. Well, always we do the same, trying to to make things different. So those were values that probably were inside my." My, my my mind and yeah, probably uh, stayed with you yes yeah all your life yeah. yeah yeah probably that's that was and at what point did you decide to turn to colorectal surgery as a specialty how did that happen that was during, during the residency and uh, why i don't really know but uh you know when i was uh in barcelona doing the residency uh the uh, you know all the big surgeons were hepatobiliar and esophagogastric and um, colorectal was associated with the stools. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, fecal <laughs> and fecal things. So uh, there was not so uh, much um, famous, to yeah. say. Like Less that. interest. Interest, yes. But I don't know why uh, I said, uh, this is amazing because, you know, uh, all the problems of... Uh, the proctology, all the problems of colorectal cancer uh, were really uh, important. And that is why during the residency, I, I had a stage in, 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 in St. Mark Hospital in London. Uh, I was there during three months. And when I was there, I realized that, that I really liked that. that. Uh, I finished my residency and my PhD program to follow uh, uh, more knowledge in in another uh, colorectal center and uh, I decided to go to Paris and I wanted to go to Paris just in in one way I think it's very 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 important to travel yes S see other see other organizations not to be in the same place never because um, when you travel you realize what is better but what you have better at home mm -hmm. not all the, what is outside is better and you realize that at home you got you have many things that are very important and are better than outside and you can realize that when you travel and you see other things that is why i think when you are young uh, go abroad. I mean, if you are in England, go to, to 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 France or go to Germany or go to States. Or but go abroad. I, I see others organizations, see others things. Not only I think in 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 medicine, uh, but also in in others in others in areas. Mm -hmm. uh, these things 
must be besides to learn languages. Yes. So uh, uh, from Anglo-Saxon and English people, they have they are lucky. But if you are not very very important from the right beginning, learn English, learn English, and if you can learn English, also another language, like French, like German, Italian, very important. It opens doors because this open door and give you and when you travel and go to others one very important thing open your mind and those things are really really very important open mind travel languages uh, knowing other people different people try to think that is very important in and uh, uh, trying to speak with people that doesn't uh, think like you. Make good discussions. When you discuss in a proper way, you learn a lot. Uh, try to speak with people that thinks absolutely different like you, because that makes you questions. And is the the way how to improve? Is that one of the reasons why you come to Irka to teach? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. That's the way. That's what it is, isn't it? It's a, a blend of cultures, people Absolutely. from many different countries exchange, exchanging ideas. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, the idea is to push surgery forward. Absolutely. And yeah, it's um, obviously uh, very, very important to exchange ideas, confront points of view as well. Uh, are there times where you don't agree with other surgeons? Of course, always. Many times. Yeah, but that's part Many of the... Many times. But, you know, uh, one of the... Of, if, you, if, if you if you go to the academic area, it's very important, you know, the, uh, the rules of the academic area. I think it's very important not to be... not, not, not to agree with the people because it's, it's when you are questioning the things and you are uh, taking the ideas. But... Uh, in the academic area, the things are discussing by numbers, research, design of the research, and results. Yes. So, uh, please, uh, don't don't take care about people that says, "I this is the best because it's my experience," or because. I am professor of surgery, so I say that this is the best. Please, don't take care about that. Yes. Because I remember once I was in Canada, in, in Montsenay, and uh, I remember that there, there was a great professor that says, look, we have uh, several meetings, and in the meetings, um, there there are nurse, students, uh, um, great surgeons, all the people can say what they want. But if they say something, they have to say something that is based in scientific evidence. What I don't want to hear is something that is nonsense. Yes. Something that because I say so, because uh, I am the best. Mm. No. That's not a good reason. That's not a good reason. But if one student about anything says, I have read something or some study that is telling something against something that I have, I want to hear that. Mm. So uh, it's important, the discussion, but with academic rules. Yes, of course. And in that way, we can discuss everything, everything. Always in respect. Always in respect, always knowing what is the best. And uh, if you are telling me things that you don't agree and you demonstrate them because there is something that you have developed or because you have read something that I don't know, it's me who is going to, to win because I'm going to learn something else. That's such a good state of mind. It's a true scientific state of mind, I think. So that, that's, that's the way. How, that is how I think. Yeah. That it, that it works, 
and uh, the mentality of the people and for the young people how to grow up. It's a great mentality, I think. And, you know, you, you come across as a very humble, uh, genuine person with a, a warm smile on your face as well. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to ask you, how do you value uh, the importance of connecting on a personal level with your patients as opposed to just uh, focusing on the medical duties and, you know, in a mechanical, uh, a mechanical and distant way? How important is that to you? Um, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's very, very important uh, question because don't forget that one of the main thing that we, ha we, done, we have not uh, focused is that all what we have said, the main, the main objective is the patient. And uh, when I say the patient, I said the patient like a person with this, his mentality, his emotions, his feelings. And uh, you know what's the more important thing for a surgeon? That when you speak to your patient, after that, the patient must be ask, must ask, ask, ask you, are you going the surgeon who are you going to operate me? Because this feeling, this um, kind of uh, cure that you can do it when you are talking with your patient, I think is the main thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't forget that all what we have said, if it is not related and focused to the patient, there is no sense. Yes, of course. Have you had cases where uh, you felt that you as a surgeon made a difference, a real difference, and Cases where this, you know, it reaffirmed your passion, your passion uh, for surgery, uh, and think this is exactly why I do this job. This is exactly why I love doing this. Uh, I have to tell you that almost every day. Okay, yeah. that's the best possible answer. Yeah, I have <laughs> to great. say that yes. Uh, but the more important point in those cases is when you are doing so and you have a student, a medical student beside you. So they can learn from that. Yeah, I, I think that this passion, passion that you have with your career, with your uh, area, if you have a student beside you and is watching how you are explaining to a patient that has a colorectal cancer, how is going to, to do the procedure from a positive point of view, that you are going to put all the things to cure and uh, you are going to put all your professional point of view that all the things you are going to try that are going well, I think it's very important because sometimes the people ask you for results. And I always, I always say the same thing. I can't uh, give you exactly or guarantee the results. I can guarantee that I put all my professional in the in doing the best. And I think and all the team will do the same because probably I am going to be the surgeons who are going to be uh, the responsible. But I can do all that with all the team and all the team are not only surgeons, nurses, anesthesiologists, uh, nurse in the in the in the OR uh, in the in the hospitalization um, area. So uh, all that people is so important, mm -hmm. and uh, for the patient, uh, he had to know that we are all together. In 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 his sense, uh, you know, there's almost a philosophical dimension to your profession because we're we're talking about uh, life and death as well. Yeah. Um, do you think that your practice of surgery has shaped or changed your perspective um, on life or humanity? Yeah. In, in what yes. way? Uh, one of the things from. Um, me like a surgeon, um, my way of life is the decision. The surgeons, we cannot doubt. Mm. We have to make decisions and quickly. 
So uh, one of the things in, in my life is that when I have to to uh, you know to buy uh, trousers, uh, green or black, black, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, uh, things like that. <laughs> um, so uh, make decisions is one of the uh, things very important that we uh, learn during we are surgeons because we think that the worst decision is not to make a decision so make wrong decisions because in that way you learn and uh, and uh, well if you have the good decision then you are great but you know make decisions is one of the things in our life that we have learned uh, when when you are surgeons and the second you know colorectal uh, cancer uh, the the main the main prevalence of the of the colorectal cancers is between 25 and 60 years old. So I have seen so many people that they, they were waiting for the retire because they say, when I be retired, I do that, 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 that. That, that then when I, they have reached the retired time, they have a colorectal cancer and know the, the best one. Okay. So um, it's important. Uh, in your life, when you uh, can, uh, um, you know, um, appreciate something or want to do something, or you know, you have families that are uh, next to you and uh, you don't have in much time, don't do it. Of course. Try to organize your time and try to do it now when you can, because you don't know what would happen. You know, surgery is a field that's con constantly evolving. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of um, technical advancements at the moment. What are some of the advancements that you're particularly excited about? Um, th there are some of them, but, but I think um, from the surgical point of view, of, of course, robotics. Yes. Yes, of course, robotics. Uh, and is going to come an amazing um, amazing years because uh, the kind of robots the kind of of procedures that we can develop and and of course in, under the minimal invasive surgery uh, is going to be great is going to be great but we don't have to forget uh, the patient so prepare the patient we have realized also that is you can do a perfect surgery, but if the patient is not well prepared to go to the surgery, the outcomes are completely different. Mm. So don't forget, don't forget the patient, because at the end the results are the patients. So if you perform a perfect surgery, but the patient is died, the patient is died. Do you think some surgeons tend to forget that sometimes? Uh, I won't. I, I won't like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for the future, absolutely not. So uh, uh, it's very important, all the skill, but the more important is prepare the patient. Every patient is different. It's not the same uh, 80 years old patient than a 40 years old patient, a child patient. So... Uh, if we have, and uh, in colorectal, many are elderly, so uh, we have to prepare very well those patients. Because those patients, if we prepare adequately, even if you do a medium surgery, the outcome should be good. But if you don't prepare the patient, because the patient is with anemia, bad nutrition, so is you know uh, in in a pneumonia and you don't realize that they have their pneumonia and you do the perfect robotic surgery the patient is going to die so uh, both things both things together are going to give us you know the success but uh, what I want to, 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 to say is um, uh, the problem that we can have in the next years is that all the, this big technology is going, is going to uh, take you know, over. Yes. And to forget what is the main thing.
I was going to ask you about that. Isn't it a double-edged sword? Because yeah. you should also be able to perform the surgery without the robots, shouldn't you? Absolutely, yes. So um, I, th I think it's one of the, um, of the uh, problems, message that we have to do. And uh, um, as experienced surgeons, that we are teaching a new surgeons, I think we have um, the, re the responsibility to tell them that new uh, skills are coming, new devices are coming, that is very important uh, know knowing all these new procedures, but don't forget, the focus yeah. is the patient. Yeah, the fundamentals. The fundamental. So what's, uh, what's next for you? Uh, do you have any projects for the future? Um, well, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to, uh, to give more answer, uh, to the questions that we have, uh, um, I'm leading uh, some, um, multi centers trial, uh, clinical trials, also um, some, uh, new, uh, innovations and devices like the surgery program. Very exciting. Yeah. And, and, al and also, you know, I have, uh, all my uh, work in, in teaching in the university and uh, also uh, teaching a, a, a new surgeons. So, Which uh, university was that? Yes, it's uh, University Autonoma de Barcelona. In Barcelona then? Yes, okay. yes. Medical st students after third year are coming to our uh, service and uh, we have all the time students from third, fourth, fifth. So um, that is why um, I think it's really important, uh, you know, all these messages, uh, telling them and uh, how we think um, must be uh, the future, the medical, the future medical people. Well, I think, you know, your students are very lucky to have you as a mentor uh, well, because I think you have a great outlook on, on life and surgery. Thank you. But um, I, I have to say that I think uh, it's not only me. I think uh, the, 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 uh, the area where, where, where I am, I think, is quite a lot of, uh, uh, of, this, of this idea, of this message. So um, I don't think it's only me. Teamwork again. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us. That was very, Thank you. very inspiring indeed. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you. Uh, Moltes gracias. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone who's contributed to putting this podcast together. Uh, many thanks to all our listeners worldwide. Stay tuned, everyone, because we've got some more prestigious guests coming on the show very soon. More stories to share. Uh, so don't miss out. Stay tuned and see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you.